So hi everyone, uh, welcome to our algorithm seminar. Uh, today we were very happy to have uh, Jason Leon to give a talk here. Um, Jason is a fifth year PhD student at the MIT Operations Research Center, advised by Nagin Gorizai and Patrick Gilliet. Uh, he graduated summa cum laude from Columbia University with a Bachelor of Science in Operations Research. Uh, Jason's research interests include online learning mechanism design and uh, revenue management for online marketplaces. Uh, Jason was also a student researcher in the market algorithm group at Google hosted by Vahab and during uh, 2022 winter. Uh, please welcome our speaker. All right, thanks, Jimmy. Uh, thanks for the kind intro. Uh, you can all hear me okay, right? Okay, perfect. Yes. All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jason Liang, and as uh, Jaming mentioned, I'm a fifth year PhD at the MIT Operations Research Center, uh, working with Negan uh, from MIT Sloan and also Patrick Jaye from ECS. And uh, today, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here uh, to present my work uh, with all of you. Um, um, and today, I'm going to talk about uh, my research uh, on auto bidding uh, conducted with Vahab Marakni and also uh, Yuan Deng while I was a student researcher here at Google. And the talk will surround topics in advertiser ad campaign management and also uh, improving fairness for individual welfare in ad uh, auction outcomes. Um, so I can't really see uh, everyone's camera. So if you have any, any questions, just feel free to chime in and stop me. OK, let me. Okay, so I'm going to start with a very high level abstraction of the auto bidding ecosystem that we uh, consider. And there are two main parties that come to play. So first, we have advertisers, which go to ad platforms, or what we call channels, uh, to run their ad campaigns. And in the auto bidding world, advertisers designate channels to procure ad impressions on their behalf by expressing their procurement goals through channel levers that are presented on the channel interfaces. So for example, such channel uh, levers may include uh, per channel budgets, per channel return on investments, or what we call ROI, uh, you know, campaign duration length, et cetera. And essentially it is at the discretion of advertisers to determine which levers they're gonna use and how they set these levers on different channels. Now, the other major party uh, in the ecosystem, of course, are the channels themselves, which have two primary functionalities, at least in the context of this particular talk, uh, namely auto bidding and also uh, running uh, ad auctions. So after, as I described, a channel receives the channel lever information from advertisers, it deploys some auto bidding algorithm to bid on uh, auctions it runs and procures ads on the advertiser's behalf. So the channel then reports back the uh, procurement details, such as number of clicks, uh, conversion, et cetera, or spend back to the advertiser. So for each of the parties, uh, we want to address several research questions. From the perspective of advertisers, we want to understand how effective are different levers, such as per channel budgets and ROIs. And do advertisers actually have to use all the presented levers to achieve the ad procurement conversion goals uh, that they wish? And finally, how do we optimize these levers across different channels? For example, given a total uh, budget of an advertiser, how should we allocate our spend across different channels? Now, on the other hand, standing from the viewpoint of channels, how do we enhance auction outcome efficiency uh, to improve individual welfare or improving what we call individual fairness? So in this talk, we would consider, uh, or con uh, basically this talk consists of two main parts. Uh, in the first part, we address the advertising problem and discuss the effectiveness of different channel levers and how we optimize them. And in the second part, uh, I'm gonna talk about a channel's auction design problem to improve individual welfare and fairness. So here, let's start our discussion of the first part. And uh, this is based on a recent paper called Multi-Channel Auto Bidding with Budget and ROI Constraints, uh, which is available on archive for people who are interested. So let's say we're an advertiser and we face various channel options to procure ads such as Google Ads and uh, Meta Ads Manager. Each channel consists of numerous auctions that correspond to user queries. And from our perspective, these auctions effectively map bids to values and costs. And you can think of values as being uh, expected click conversion and cost being, for example, like highest competing bids in the market. And our goal is to maximize total value across all auctions while respecting two constraints. The first one is called an 
a global ROI constraint, which simply says that our total acquired value across all auctions and all channels is greater than total spend times our target ROI. Now, the second constraint is a global budget constraint, which simply says that our maximum spend in all auctions should be bounded by our global budget. Um, and our global optimization problem, uh, which we'll call GlobeOpt here, uh, is essentially uh, optimizing over bids in each individual auction across uh, all the channels. And for those who work in ads, uh, I, I want to pause here a little bit and highlight that our results uh, that I'll talk about in the later slide not only hold for value maximizers, but also for quasi-linear utility maximizers. Uh, but for the ease of the presentation of this talk, I would only uh, focus on you know, value maximizers. So as, the, as I described late, uh, earlier, the global optimization problem for an advertiser requires us uh, to optimize bids in every single auction. But unfortunately, this may not be plausible in the auto bidding world, especially when uh, us as an advertiser are facing channels that correspond to different corporations or different entities like Google and Facebook. So to illustrate, uh, in the auto bidding world, advertisers designate channels to bid on their behalf, and advertisers cannot control the bidding behavior in individual auctions themselves. And the only thing that we can control uh, or we can do is to set uh, channel levers. And in this work, we specifically focus on two primary levers, uh, the, what we call the per channel budget and also the per channel ROI. So the figure here is a screenshot uh, I took um, of the interfaces for Google Ads and also for Meta Ads Manager. So these are the, basically the interfaces of what you would see uh, if you're an advertiser going on uh, you know, the websites. And we can see that both the per channel budget and ROI levers are the major levers that are immediately presented to advertisers at first sight on the interfaces, if not the only ones. So as we discussed earlier, an advertiser can choose to input a per channel budget and ROI to each channel. And once the auto bidding procurement ends in a channel, it reports back total conversion and spend. And in our work, we consider the setting where channels procure ads on our behalf with the objective to maximize our total value on that particular channel, um, subject to a per channel ROI and budget constraint based on our input per channel ROI and uh, budgets. And basically, our strategy space as an advertiser is to set the per channel budget and ROI levers for each of these channels. And we refer to this lever decision problem uh, as channel ops. So just to quickly summarize the two models that I just described, um, in our global problem, global opt, we are assuming that we can optimize bids over all individual auctions ourselves, which is somewhat similar to manual bidding, not exactly the same. Um, but in the channel opt problem, we are in the auto bidding world, and we can only determine the lever values, uh, for example, setting per channel budgets, per channel ROIs, and let each channel bid on our behalf with the objective to maximize conversion uh, on that particular channel while subject to the per channel ROI and budget constraints. So the two key questions we want to uh, ask are the following. How effective are per channel ROI and budget levers? Or in other words, can we use these levers to achieve what we could have, uh, what we could have achieved in the global optimization problem? And is it possible to set, for example, only one of the levers? And the second question is simply, how do we optimize over uh, these channel levers? So as a quick summary of our results, we first show that if uh, we only set per channel ROIs, then what we can achieve through channel opt can be arbitrarily worse compared to the global problem, uh, even in the case when there are no global budget constraints. And in contrast, we show that solely optimizing for uh, per channel budgets allows us to achieve the global optimization problem. And on the other hand, we develop an efficient algorithm to optimize over these per channel budgets. So let me shed more light on our first negative result, uh, which says that solely setting per channel ROIs uh, may occur arbitrarily worse conversion compared to the global optimal problem. To provide some insight, consider uh, this example in this slide over here, where we have two channels. Channel one has a, a single auction, and channel two has two auctions. And we're going to assume that our global target ROI is one, which simply means our total spend has to be less than uh, our, our total acquired value across all the auctions. And further, we don't assume uh, we have any global budget limits, and we only set per channel ROIs. Now, let's take a deeper look at our values to cost pairs for each single auction. 
Uh, auction one is basically a free auction because the cost uh, that we're facing is zero. Auction two and three are parameterized by some positive number, uh, which we'll call X, and have the same value to cost ratio. So the key feature here for auction uh, for channel two is that both auctions have the same uh, value to cost ratios. So if we submit uh, some like any per channel ROI to this uh, channel two, we would either win both auctions or win neither of them. So now let's take a quick look at the optimal outcomes for both the global opt and the channel opt problems. And in global opt, uh, we basically want to win auctions one and two and acquire a total value of one plus X. And this is easy to see because first of all, auction one is free, so we would want to win it no matter what. If we win auctions one, two, and three altogether, then our ROI constraint would be validated because our total acquired value would be you know, the summation of the first row, which is three X plus one. Um, which is less than our total spend, which is the summation of the second row, which is uh, 3x plus 3. And similarly, if we uh, win only auctions 1 and 3, our ROI constraint would again be uh, violated. And I'll skip the, the, the detailed logic over here. Um, so now channel opt is a bit more interesting. Uh, since we can only win the free auction 1, uh, this is because, as mentioned earlier, setting any per channel ROI to channel two would either win both auctions, two and three, or win neither of them. And because we just argued that winning all of them would violate our ROI constraint, that would essentially tell us that the channel opt problem would uh, demand winning only auction one. So, and this basically finally shows that the ratio between uh, total conversion of the two problems, so if we look at channel opt divided by global opt, uh, this ratio here can be arbitrarily close to zero when we have a, a large X. So essentially here we constructed an example where, um, you know, solely optimizing for, oh, I see a question. Uh, I can't really yeah, sorry. see. Um, yeah. So if you were to look for a buy criteria solution, which says like I can violate the ROI constraint by a little bit, mm -hmm. then would just providing per channel ROI let you violate it by a little bit, but then like get close enough to global opt? Or is it going to be like even with very large violations, you still cannot get close to global opt? Because so in this case, it's just yeah. a, yeah. No, please go ahead. That's the question, basically. Yeah, uh, so I think that's a great question. Um, we, in fact, think that uh, no matter, like, let's say, let's say your, uh, like, the the amount of validation you allow is some epsilon, right? We can still parameterize, construct an example and parameterize that problem instance that depends on this epsilon, and then construct a similar example like this. So, uh, although we don't have like this particular example in 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 the uh, in the paper itself, uh, we do conjecture that it's possible to construct like such an example that's parameterized by the by, by the amount of violation. Okay. Yeah. So, and and uh, actually, that's a great point. But I think like the key takeaway is in this slide. And if you still have a question, I'll, I'll, we can get back to that a little bit. But the intuition here is basically saying that. Um, you know, or at least in scenarios that resemble what we see here in this example, is that some channels may have multiple auctions with the same or similar value cost pairs. And thereby solely setting, you know, per channel ROIs cannot enable us to identify the specific auction uh, or auctions won under the global uh, optimization problem. However, this insight also hints the fact that, you know, per channel budgets can help us identify the auctions uh, we win under the global optimization problem. So for example, if we limit the per channel budget uh, in a channel two simply to one plus X, then we can win auction two together with the free auction one, which is exactly what we would have achieved under the global problem. And again, we highlight that this insight holds even if we don't have a global budget constraint. So essentially the key um, takeaway here is that you know, we want to identify specific auctions in uh, in different channels that are demanded by the global problem, and you know, per channel ROIs don't allow us to do that. Specifically, in cases where you have a bunch of auctions that have similar uh, um, value to cost ratios. And I hope I answered uh, your like. This kind of sheds light on the question that you just asked. Okay, so. Just to quickly summarize, we show that solely optimizing per channel ROIs may lead to uh, bad outcomes compared to the global optimum, or somewhat equivalently, if we 
have some mechanic, some complex mechanic that allows us to solve for the global optimization problem. And then we calculate the realized ROI in each channel uh, under this global odd problem and use that as our per channel uh, ROI lever decisions, we can be arbitrarily worse off. But on the other hand, if we solely optimize for per channel budgets, uh, that basically allows us to achieve this uh, global optimum, uh, even if we don't have a global budget constraint. And again, that means that you know, somewhat equivalently, if we have some complex mechanic that solves the global optimization problem for us, and then we calculate the realized spend in each of the channel and use that as the, you know, the per channel budget lever decisions, then we can in fact achieve the optimal conversion. So mathematically, that basically says that the spend in the optimal, uh, under the global optimal solution for each of the channels is exactly the optimal budget, uh, budget decisions, per channel budget decisions that we're looking for. So the key takeaway, if I had to put all this in uh, one sentence, is that the deficient language of setting per channel budgets alone is actually sufficient to help us achieve the global optimum conversion through the channels. Okay. So I want to pause here a little bit uh, because this is the non-technical part that I want to highlight, and I want to. I hope that the the key message here is clear. I want to pause here and see if anyone has any questions or comments. Oh, I see a hand. Okay. Uh, yes. yes. So one question. So, seems uh, the in the example, um, yeah. it's a discrete example yeah. Oh, yeah. that you have. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, we assume some smoothness or continuous. Like uh, the value you can get from uh, setting some uh, RI constraint. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think you, there there will be some similar scenario? That's a that's a good question. Um, actually, that's work in progress. We're actually trying to consider uh, some family of distributions that allow us to achieve like a similar counterexample like this. Um, so the, the short answer is no, we currently don't have that particular example for continuous distributions. But I do want to highlight that our positive result for setting per channel budgets uh, alone, that holds for continuous distributions. So we're not making any assumptions on the positive results saying that you know, this has to be uh, like a, a, a discrete distribution. But for the negative result, that's work in progress. And that's a good point. Yeah, thanks. Cool. Good question. Thanks. Um, any other questions? Okay, cool. Then I guess I'll continue. All right. So, um, so the rest of the first part is going to be a little bit uh, more technical, and I uh, do the interest of time. I'm going to quickly go through, like, just go through the slides and highlight uh, some uh, key takeaways from the technical perspective for people who are interested in theory. Um, but essentially, uh, what we want to do here is, in reality, so back to this slide. In reality, uh, we don't have that complex mechanic that I just mentioned to solve the, for the global optimization problem and then cal calculate the per channel uh, spends uh, in each of the channels. Um, and especially when we're dealing with separate uh, independent channels, like for example, like Google and Facebook, these are separate entities. So the question is, how can we figure out like, what amount uh, is spent in each channel under the global optimization problem? Or in other words, like what is the global uh, optimal per channel budgets? So in response, we enter, uh, uh, you know, like the, the the kind of discussion of developing an optimization algorithm that helps us figure out these optimal per channel budgets. Now, before I go into the actual, uh, uh, um, you know, conclusion, let me uh, quickly translate what I mentioned in the previous slides into, into math, and uh, so people can have a better understanding of what's going on here. So again, like we're assuming, we're taking the perspective of an advertiser. We face M channels. Each channel has a number of auctions. And then each channel is basically associated with a value and cost pair. And the cost, again, uh, you can think of it as highest competing bids, uh, which we'll denote as Z here. And we're assuming that you know, Z is sampled from, from, from some finite support. So this is a discrete distribution stochastic setting. Now, given ZJ, uh, like uh, these Zs, um, value to cost pairs, optimizing bids, as I mentioned before, is basically equivalent to choosing which auctions we want to win. So effectively, we can write the global optimization problem as, as this following um, you know, optimization problem here. Uh, the objective is to maximize global conversion or maximize global welfare. And these decision variables, x's, are basically the probability of me or us winning you know, uh, any individual auction. And these two constraints correspond to the ROI and budget 
the global ROI and the global budget constraints, respectively. And essentially, in the global problem, again, we're uh, optimizing individual uh, optimizing bids in individual auctions and using the language in this slide, we're basically optimizing over the individual auctions that we want to win. So the channel problem, on the other hand, uh, is described as the follow. So we set our per channel budgets and set our per channel ROIs. And then the channel reports back a total conversion, which we'll denote as some function V. Okay, and also the spend, which is uh, this capital D over here. Uh, what's in what, what what's interesting here is that we're going to consider like the channel's optimization problem after receiving these input parameters as the following. So again, like the channel wants to help us maximize uh, total value in that particular channel while subject to both the per channel ROI and the per channel budget constraints. And again, like the channel problem. Um, essentially says that you know, we input some two parameters in the channel and the channel helps us optimize uh, uh, over which auctions they want to win in that particular channel, subject to the input parameters that I gave the channel. Okay, so and so uh, earlier on I mentioned that you know per channel ROIs are uh, insufficient to help us achieve the global optimal goal. And using this language here, basically in the per, uh, with the per channel ROI kind of option, we're setting like per channel budgets to infinity. And in the you know, per channel budget only option, we're setting like the per channel ROIs to zero. And again, we showed, we argued that, you know, global opt equals the channel opt uh, problem when we choose this per channel budget only option. And these are just details that I'll, that I'll quickly skip over. So now the channel optimization problem becomes the following. We want to maximize the total conversion across all channels. So again, like these Vs are the channel responses, uh, which are basically the channel um, conversion that they report back to us, subject to you know, a global ROI and a global budget constraint. And our optimization algorithm runs uh, in the following manner. Uh, in each period, you can think of uh, one period as a single day. Uh, at the beginning of the period, we set a per channel budget, and at the end of the period, at the end of the day, we observe, uh, you know, the total conversion on each channel and also the total spend. And this kind of repeats uh, in in a, in a timely fashion as time progresses. And we're making two important assumptions here that I think uh, are, are of theoretical interest. So the first is vended feedback, which basically means that after inputting a per channel budget we're only observing the realized conversion value, this, this V function applied to the per channel budget that, that we input. And basically we do not know the conversion evaluated at any other per channel budgets or realizations of value cost pairs. So this is like a bandit or zero order feedback for people in optimization. And we're assuming that each channel depletes the entire uh, per channel budget every period. So uh, I'll just quickly go through this detail here. Uh, if anyone's interested, please stop me. But essentially, you know, like uh, using a standard uh, framework called stochastic gradient descent, uh, which is typically what people use to handle like constraint optimization problems, uh, we're looking at the Lagrangian uh, of of this channel opt problem, and the stochastic gradient descent or SGD primal dual framework basically says uh, basically consists of two two steps. One is a primal update step where we optimize the Lagrangian with respect to our per channel budgets, um, with respect to uh, you know uh, like the realized uh, dual variables that, that we're observing, and then the second step is updating these dual variables themselves. But the challenge here is that we can't really update uh, the primal decisions or optimize for the primal decisions simply because that. Uh, you know, feedback is, is zero order or we have banded feedback because we don't really necessarily know the, the Lagrangian functions, the format of the Lagrangian functions. So our resolution here is uh, to augment uh, stochastic gradient descent with uh, so-called upper confidence bound algorithms, which is a, a very standard algorithm uh, in uh, to handle banded feedback settings. And essentially what we do is, first of all, we discretize our uh, you know, budget set or decision set into discretize you know, little arms. Um, and then we take a contextualized view of this Lagrangian problem. And essentially, the dual variables can be considered as adversarial context. The per channel budgets, again, are arms. The Lagrangian is basically a mean contextual reward function uh, given any arm and any context. 
So the primal updates that would then become, you know, optimizing some estimate of the Lagrangian given some uh, gi given the dual variables or given the context, and then we continue to maintain like some estimate of you know the conversion function using uh, UCB. But the main challenge here is discretization and context would typically lead to very large estimation errors. Um, and this slide I want to pause a little bit and highlight uh, because it's relates to a particular structure of the problems of interest. So to handle the, the issue that I mentioned in the previous slide, you know, the large errors due to uh, continuum arms or discretization and also adversarial context, um, is the fact that we rely on the salient uh, structure of the contextual bandwidth reward or the, the Lagrangian function. Um, essentially, we show that the Lagrangian function is continuous, it's piecewise linear, but more importantly, it's also concave and unimodal. So utilizing or exploiting this structure, we're able to handle uh, you know, large errors uh, due to discretization of arms and also adversarial context. And that would allow us to achieve you know, nice performance guarantees. Okay, so you know, again, we recall that optimizing budget only uh, per channel budgets only allows us to achieve the global optimal problem. And basically, we can decompose this regret uh, into two parts, the errors due to UCB and the errors due to stochastic gradient descent. And we basically show that you know the, the UCB error is in the order of t to the power of 2 third, assuming that we run the algorithm for t periods. And then the stochastic gradient descent error is t uh, square root of t. So the, the final takeaway is that, you know, combining all I just described, is that we're able to find a estimate of the per channel budget profiles such that we achieve an accuracy in the order of t to the power of uh, negative one over third, like one thirds, uh, with slight constraint violations uh, for ROI and budget, which are in the order of uh, one over square root of t. So this is our uh, the vanilla version of our UCD and SGD algorithm. Uh, and this is one of the key results that we present in the paper in terms of optimizing for these per channel budgets. Now, the final slide for this particular part is uh, three main extensions of the work that might be of interest to, to some of you. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to quickly address the, the constraint violation issue that I mentioned here. Basically, we have a uh, an advanced version of the algorithm that we proposed that allows us to uh, you know, remove these constraint violations. Oh, uh, Davis, how big is T? So it really depends. Um, so we do have some assumptions, particularly on T, um, such that you know, when T is above some number, then you know, these guarantees hold uh, with probability one. So, uh, but the threshold for this particular capital T depends on the problem instance. So meaning that if we go back a little bit to the realization of the value to cost pairs, it basically depends on uh, what your support looks like. So meaning that from which set you know, these, these value and cost pairs are drawn from. I hope that answers your question. If not, then please jump in again. <laughs> It, it does. And, well, I'm just thinking, can I, can I think of T as something like a percent of, of the total spend, or it's better to think of it as just a, a, an optimization parameter? So uh, how we think about it, at least in the work, and yeah, feel, feel free to uh, jump in um, if you have any other thoughts, but at least uh, in uh, from an academic perspective, we're thinking of T as different periods. Let's say, you know, uh, one period is one single day. So you run the algorithm for, let's say, uh, half a year or something like that. Um, and then, and then this capital T would correspond to half a year. Oh, great. So it should get, okay. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, so usually in this analysis, what we care about is where this term is sublinear. So if this term is sublinear, so it looks something like this, then it would basically vanish when he is very large. Yeah. And also I want to quickly comment on, on, on that as well. Uh, so from a, I mean, from an external perspective, I don't work at Google, <laughs> um, you can also think about uh, running multiple campaigns parallel in parallel. Uh, so basically, if you, let's say if you uh, if you run ten campaigns uh, in parallel and then you run that for a hundred days, that would kind of be equivalent to capital T being ten times a hundred, which is a thousand. So if you want to shorten everything, you can also run these multiple campaigns and and do that do the estimation um, in that in that sense. Cool. I hope that was uh, that was good enough. All right. Yes, uh, Andres? 
Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the nice talk. Uh, one question is that is this model also could be generalized? For instance, if within a channel you can slice asset budgets uh, on some subset of queries, would the same techniques apply, or do you need different channels? In the sense that they're kind of different auction rules, and that's where the, your theory grounds on. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, I want to clarify your question a little bit because I'm not super familiar with slicing. I've heard about this term a lot. So uh, from my understanding is slicing basically, does that basically mean you, uh, you, know, you target specific uh, users like according to, according to their, their features or something like that? Right, and, or some specific queries within the channel that you may want to set some budget and other queries. Right, mm -hmm. you can see uh, this way to slice. But think about some diff, some budget or some specific queries and other budget or other specific queries within the channel itself. Think about mm -hmm. Google, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, uh, so again, you're in. Feel feel free to chime in. Um, so I think uh, like the the slicing doesn't really matter here. So again, like I think this is related to my earlier comment about you know running these things in parallel. So we can think about uh, different slices as different copies of of this algorithm. And then your estimation would pretty much be uh, be correlated or, or, re or related in some sense. But I think like one caveat that we want to that perhaps is relevant is that you know if you have different slices or different users, then your support might be different. So that might be a, a potential issue. Again, feel free to. Yeah, I think it depends. If I uh, for for each channel we have live further fragments. Uh, uh, budget constraint per slice, and um, but we still only have one live per channel ROI. Uh, I somehow believe our algorithm can be generalized in some sense, and if we can for each sub slice, we can further uh, like specify the per slice ROI. Then it's uh, it's basically an another version of our problem. Um, yeah, I think that's a good question. But yeah, in general, I believe our our results should be able to generalize. Thanks. Well, thank you for the question. Um, and ongoing work, we're hoping to you know run so run this algorithm uh, using real data and see how it actually performs, and that is currently ongoing. Uh, but that's a good uh, suggestion. Anyways, um, so the first extension is a constraint validation. We're able to handle that, uh, meaning that we can you know uh, develop some advanced version of the algorithm that I just described. And then achieve no no constraint violation at all, meaning that after we run this advanced version of the algorithm, we're going to arrive at an estimate of per channel budget such that there is no constraint violation, but still achieve the same you know accuracy in terms of conversion um, estimation. Um, the second uh, kind of uh, extension is for multi-item auctions. So in the previous slides, I kind of described this value to cost paired, and that somewhat implies uh, we're dealing with a single item auction, but in the paper, uh, we talk about you know, how all our results would actually hold for multi-item auctions uh, once these auctions satisfy an increasing marginal values uh, property. So we know that the VCG auction uh, for multiple slots uh, you know, possesses this increasing marginal value property. But unfortunately, for GSP and GFP, uh, generalized first price and generalized second price, um, we have to impose additional assumptions for this increasing marginal values to hold. Uh, specifically, those assumptions might be related to the click-through rates, but that's a, a different topic. And the third extension uh, we're proposing is, um, you know, in the earlier slides I talked about, uh, mainly we're considering advertisers uh, that are value maximizers, but our results, all our results actually, also hold for a more general objective, uh, which is what we call the private cost model, uh, meaning that we want to optimize, our objective is to optimize uh, total value minus some alpha, which is called the private cost, times the total spend. So when alpha equals zero, we recover the value maximizing case. And when alpha equals one, we achieve the uh, quasi-linear utility case. Um, and all the results that I just described uh, still hold in this setup. And I want to point out that once we adopt this model, we're still assuming that channels are maximizing value uh, for for advertisers. So there's this this misalignment between what the channel is doing and what we as an advertiser are hoping to optimize. But results still hold. Our algorithm still holds, and the results saying of the negative negative and the positive results for per channel ROI and per channel budget still hold in this sense. Cool.
Um, I want to pause here and see if there are any final questions or comments before I jump into the second part. If not, I'll just continue. And then later, if we have time, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm more than happy to answer any more questions offline. So the second part um, is about improving fairness in uh, auto bidding in the auto bidding world, um, and basically improving the uh, auction outcomes in terms of individual welfare uh, using machine learning advice. And here we're going to abstract away from the channel levers that we've been discussing in the previous slides, and also abstracting away from interactions between channel uh, and advertisers, and view advertisers and auto bidding as a, as a whole, or in other words, advertisers basically auto bid themselves. Okay, so we're abstracting away the the, the interaction. Part. And this work, uh, this this part of the talk is based on a, again a recent work called "Fairness in the Auto Bidding World with Machine Learning Advice." Um, and again, this is on archives for people who are interested. Feel free to. Have a look. So let me quickly illustrate the setting of interest in the context of uh, sponsored search. Every time a user submits a query, a position auction is instantiated to sell different positions on the user's web view, and multiple advertisers bid uh, in these auction uh, in this particular auction to compete for uh, these positions. So from an aggr aggregate perspective, multiple advertisers participate in multiple auctions. And the objective is to maximize total value, uh, which in this case of sponsored search uh, may be interpreted as uh, clicks. So a channel, on the other hand, aims to maximize total value across advertisers, or so-called total welfare. And in order to retain uh, advertisers or uh, incentivize you know, spend on this, uh, on, on this particular channel. So from an uh, so from a channel's perspective, uh, maximizing total welfare is a very difficult task. And for the purposes of this talk, we list out two main challenges. So first of all, advertiser values are unknown to the channel. If they were known, then basically the platform can simply allocate positions by ranking values from high to low. And in reality, channels have resorted to using uh, machine learning to predict advertiser values, or so-called machine learning advice, to handle this challenge of unknown values. And there has been a lot of academic literature that uh, present methodologies to do so. Uh, we list several here. And there's also this very great uh, work in 2021 uh, by Santiago and also by uh, Vahab, Yuan, uh, Song, and also Jianning. Um, and uh, essentially, uh, you know, this, this line of work aims to predict the advertiser value and somewhat augment the design of the auctions with these ML advice to improve you know, total welfare um, in response to the unknown values that I just mentioned. Now, the second challenge that uh, channels face is what I mean here by arbitrary is that, uh, you know, advertisers are, are developing some kind of uh, automated bidding algorithm or running some kind of algorithm that may not necessarily be be available to the auctioneers themselves and you know advertisers may be constrained uh, like as we described before and these constraints are not necessarily available again to the auctioneers so from the auctioneers perspective or from the channel's perspective you know bidding behavior may be arbitrary or using the word of uh, um, you know optimization or learning Made adversarial. So there has been a lot of work uh, on auction design to improve total welfare in light of the uh, aforementioned challenges. And for example, a re the recent work uh, by the Hobby and Solon Jaming in Santiago uh, from Colombia. Um, and basically, work more the approach to directly set advertiser value predictions or so called ML advice as personalized reserves. That and then basically the work shows that uh, by doing so, uh, we can improve the uh, total welfare of a particular channel. However, what we don't know is, or what we don't have an understanding about, is whether this would hurt certain individuals for the benefit of the channel in terms of maximizing total welfare. And we don't necessarily know how certain bidding behavior of advertisers may impact individual welfare. So the goal of this work is basically to develop a fairness metric to measure individual welfare. Uh, this metric should depend on the bidding strategy to shed light on how uh, on the relationship between you know uh, individual bidding strategies and individual welfare. And the second goal is basically to utilize uh, machine learning device to improve individual welfare. And, and machine learning device basically uh, corresponds to 
auctions and add to that values. And finally, we want to characterize fairness for classic auctions, uh, such as VCG, GSP, uh, and also generalized fairness. And as a spoiler, the key takeaway here is that we show setting personalized reserve prices with ML advice helps us improve individual. So just to give a little bit more detail uh, in terms of ML advice and personalized reserves, um, here we're going to consider ML advice or predictions of values in the format of confidence intervals. Um, so for each of the values, a particular advertiser in a particular auction, we're going to have some confidence interval uh, for the prediction. Uh, for example, uh, the confidence interval for probabilities in sponsor search has, has been uh, widely studied in the literature. And essentially, we measure the accuracy of such ML advice using this parameter called beta. So we're assuming that you know, beta times the true, the ground truth value of an advertiser in an auction is greater than lower of this uh, confidence interval. And higher beta basically corresponds to higher uh, you know, quality of the ML advice. And we're going to motivate the approach of setting personalized reserves using this lower bound, using this lower bound of the confidence interval in each single auction. These are personalized reserves. Let me quickly motivate like why this, uh, why we want to do this. Um, due to the interest of time, I'll go through this uh, example really quickly. I'm going to essentially consider the following. Uh, example. So we have two bidders uh, with no budget constraints, and uh, their ROI, uh, both of them are one. Um, and basically, both of them are, uh, both of these advertisers are bidding in uh, second price auctions. There are two of them. And we're going to assume that bidder one uh, is going to bid truthfully. Okay. And there are basically two scenarios. In the first scenario, uh, we set no reserve prices. Bidder two uh, wants Bidder 2 wants to win auctions 1 and 2, uh, acquiring a total value of 1.5, um, and then acquire and then occurring a total spend of uh, 1.5 times V, and then total spend of V, uh, which essentially says that ROI, uh, the ROI is satisfied. And Bidder 1's welfare is zero, meaning that in this scenario, when there are no reserves, Bidder 2 can effectively just eliminate Bidder 1 out of the, out of the market uh, by winning both of the auctions. However, in scenario two, where we set some you know, approximate reserve prices, and approximate reserve prices meaning that we're going to set um, these confidence interval lower bounds as the personalized reserve prices, we have to quality uh, of beta greater than uh, a half. So in this case, if bidder two wants to win both of the auctions, then she will acquire a total value of 1.5 times V, um, but her total spend would be greater than 1.5 times V. Uh, which essentially violates the ROI constraint. So this basically says that bidder two cannot outbeat uh, or outbid bidder one in uh, in both of the auctions uh, because that would violate her ROI constraint. And essentially, that would help us uh, save our one's welfare. And in this case, when we have this personalized reserve price in place, bidder one's welfare is exactly equal to what she would. Uh, obtained under the efficient outcome. Efficient meaning the welfare maximizing outcome. So this basically says that uh, approximate reserve prices, uh, or you know, setting reserve prices using machine learning advice, makes manipulated behavior very costly, and that would help us improve overall fairness, uh, individual fairness. So um, due to the interest of time, I'll just quickly skim through these slides. Uh, here we present a mathematical model. Um, you know, we have N bidders bidding in N parallel auctions. Uh, and given any bid profile, again, like these bid pro profiles uh, may, may satisfy the arbitrary. They may satisfy like certain constraints, but it doesn't really matter. You can think of them as arbitrary. And we denote like X, uh, the, uh, W as the welfare of each bidder, and P as the payment. Okay? So we're going to consider auto bidders who maximize total welfare, sub to ROI constraint, uh, we'll call it ROS constraint because uh, we don't have like the ROI parameter, assuming that it's one. And this basically says that uh, the advertiser wants her total spend to be less than the total acquired value across all the auctions. So the first metric, uh, answering our first goal that we want to propose, uh, you know, is motivi motivated by the following intuition. So fixing there's bid. In the worst case outcome where everyone's ROS constraint uh, is satisfied, how does the bidder's welfare, welfare fall short 
actually would have obtained under the efficient outcome. So mathematically, we can basically measure this as the welfare of uh, a bidder I under uh, any feasible bid profile such that everyone's ROI constraint is satisfied over the optimal welfare of bidder I. Uh, I, mean, I mean, the welfare of bidder I that she would have obtained under the efficient outcome. So our first result is providing a fairness guarantee or an individual welfare guarantee uh, for uh, for a specific year when we have these, you know, beta approximate reserve prices in place. And if we, you know, I'm going to skip through like the details here, but I guess the main takeaway is that for more accurate ML advice, uh, meaning that for larger beta, um, if we have like higher bids and if the relative market share uh, for us, like for bidder I, um, is large, then that would help us reduce manipulative power um, of competing bidders, and essentially that would uh, eventually that would help us improve overall fairness for ourselves. So this is an interesting result because uh, earlier on, um, this, the, the related paper that I talked about from uh, your Bahab, uh, Jamie, So, and also Santiago, uh, basically in that work they show that doing uh, what we did here, you know, setting personalized reserve price using uh, machine learning advice improves total welfare. But here we have a complementary kind of kind of result that says doing the same thing allows us to uh, obtain individual fairness as well. So the takeaway is that setting personalized reserve prices using ML advice has this best both world property. So it's good for total welfare and also good for individual fairness as well. And this is a kind of complementary result for the previous. And essentially, we show that uh, among all truthful uh, allocation anonymous and also possibly randomized. Uh, Auction formats, you know, auction format among this class can uh, can universally dominate VCG, and that kind of implies that VCG is the best thing we can do uh, universally speaking. Um, and finally, in our work, we also uh, characterize fairness guarantees for the generalized second price and generalized first price auction, and we um, and under the setting where we have these you know, delta separated values, meaning that uh, every value, every bidder's value in each of these are delta times away from one another, then in this case, we can compare the fairness of ECG and also GSP and GFP. So when we, uh, we discovered that when the, the value separation is large, meaning that if we have these large deltas, then GSP and GFP are, are fairer than VCG, and vice versa. If we have you know, small separated values, then a VCG is better. So just to wrap up, um, you know, to conclude both parts, in the first part, we address the advertiser's leverage decisions for multi-channel ad procurement problems. Um, we have three key takeaways. First of all, optimizing per channel ROI only can lead to arbitrary worse conversion outcomes compared to the global optimal problem. Uh, the second takeaway is optimizing per channel budgets alone can achieve the global optimal problem. And again, uh, we have that take that one sentence takeaway saying that you know this deficient language of optimizing uh, per channel budgets is sufficient for us to optimize uh, global uh, global conversion. And finally, we uh, developed a, a, a optimization algorithm that helps us uh, you know optimize for these per channel budgets. And then the second part regarding improving fairness in automating uh, auction outcomes with machine learning device, uh, we basically uh, show that setting personalized reserve prices with these ML advice. Uh, can achieve best of both world results. It improves aggregate welfare and also simultaneously ensures that individual bidder, uh, bidder welfare is guaranteed. Uh, just to quickly mention uh, some, some aspects of ongoing work, in the first part, we're also extending our results to non-optimal channel procurement, meaning that if the channels aren't necessarily uh, doing the best thing, they're not winning the, the, the auctions under the efficient outcome, or sorry, under the optimal outcome, uh, then how do we handle this scenario in terms of uh, developing optimization algorithms? And the second uh, ongoing work is we also want to consider non-truth auction formats, uh, or such as uh, you know FPA or uh, GFP. And the second part, uh, we're currently trying to run some simulations with real data to actually measure uh, fairness in in Google's auctions, and essentially compare uh, what's happening in reality and what we're proposing here to set these personalized reserve prices using ML advice. So uh, that concludes my talk, and I want to take the time to uh, really thank the Hob and also Yuan for their huge contributions and the support uh, during my time here at Google.
And thank you all for attending as well. And I, I, I think I can take several questions, right, Jamie? Uh, I have 10 minutes left. Any questions, suggestions? Maybe we add one comment that, yeah, like we're trying to add more empirical studies for the second part, uh, like the previous paper on like aggregate welfare. We had some empirical studies on some, you know, like semi-synthetic ads, uh, like uh, real data, like with beads and so on. We want to do the same uh, here to understand how, you know, like on some data, how it shows. And like, you know, like Yuan will be uh, the point of contact for that. Thanks, Juan. Of course, feel free to contact me if you have questions later. Um, and also, again, Yuan is a good point of contact. Yuan and Vahal are good point of contact. All right. If no other questions, let's uh, thank the speaker. All right. Thank you all for attending. <laughs>